typically uh, created what kind of uh, models are uh, used as a part of uh, interest rate uh, term structure and probably i will also uh, touch upon how do we typically uh, value a bond probably with option or without option how do we uh, value these kind of bonds or probably how do i value the worth of an option which is embedded in a particular bond all these things we will uh, typically uh, look at and probably we would also uh, spend some time in terms of understanding how do i value swaps using the term structure of the models so these are some of the core aspects that we will uh, look at as a part of this particular session so as far as uh, the term structures are concerned we are first uh, covering a concept called the interest rate tree which is primarily covering what could be the interest rates at different points in time starting from today so probably if i am saying this is today i am more interested in talking about what could be the interest rates probably after one year after two years what could be the interest rates at different points in time right so this kind of a tree that we are making based on some some uh, understanding what is that understanding based on what would be the movement of the interest rates in future what could be the volatility of the interest rates in the future based on the various assumptions we are trying to build a tree kind of thing and if in this uh, tree we are creating two paths two paths from every path means uh, as of today from today i am expecting that after one year the interest rate either can go here or can go here so one year rate can be either this number or this number if at all we are talking about uh, one of the two possible values we are creating only two possible values for the next period and saying that the interest rates will reach either this or this such a kind of a tree is what we call as a binomial interest rate tree we have used the similar uh, mechanisms in valuing the uh, options on uh, equities using a binomial tree model the same model uh the binomial tree is nothing but two specific paths from any one single from any one single point in time so here we are talking about the interest rates can be either this or this okay if at all after one year the interest rate reaches here then a year later it may touch either this or this but if after one year the interest rate comes here then after one more year i am expecting that either this or this will be the possible interest rate this kind of a tree where we are creating two paths at the end of uh, uh, from each uh, from each particular uh, node is what we are calling as a binomial tree and based on this binomial tree today we can value the options we can value the bonds we can do so many things using uh, this binomial tree model but how do i decide what are the interest rates at each of these nodes there are uh, different ways of going ahead with them some the most of the times they are very complex algorithms that are driven but as a concept okay what i will look at uh, is these are all like one period forward rates these are all like one period forward rates so what i can very well talk about is i can use the existing prevailing spot rates based on the prevailing uh, spot rates or even before that i'll pick up 
all the on the run securities and uh, using these on the run securities using the bootstrapping mechanism i can derive the spot rates for all these periods and uh, based on the spot rates i can compute the forward rates for each of the periods this and okay if i am computing the forward rate i'll get only one value but i will use the volatility concept to decide that it can either come here or it can come here based on the forward rate and the volatility that is built into it i'll create the two possible paths from each particular path i can create uh, the volatilities and make sure that it is created in such a way that for all the on the run securities that are currently available in the market their value will be same as the market price value will be same as the market price so based on those kind of algorithms we will derive these interest rates at each of the nodes but once i have the interest rates at each of the nodes i have to be more and more comfortable in valuing the bonds or valuing the options uh, on those uh, bonds using these generated interest rate tree paths so for that i will uh, take up uh, one simple uh, example right my uh, this is the same way we might have uh, done the valuation of the bond or valuation of an uh, option on the equity security also the same logic will use for uh, bond valuation so this is called as a backward induction method because for valuing the bond as on this date when i have the interest rates at each of these uh, points when i have the interest rates at each of these uh, points <coughs> i'll find out the value of the bond if i have to find out the value of the bond as on this date i'll try to find out what are the possible values for the bond as on these dates and these values are arrived from what are the possible values of the bond as on these dates so we work backwards we start right in the maturity year discount that to the a year before it or a period before it using the interest rates that were prevailing uh, at that point arrive at all the possible values of the bond in that particular year then again use the same concept to value it uh, back to the current year so because we come from the almost the maturity year back to the current uh, period we call this kind of uh, mechanism to find the value of the bond uh as the backward induction mechanism so we'll try to uh, see how we can use this uh, backward induction uh, mechanism to compute the value of the bond okay so for that we'll take this small numerical let me try to depict this numerical assume that the current one year forward rate is 5% so as on today i'm assuming that the interest rate is 5% as a notation probably we can use uh, a kind of a rectangular box kind of a notation here i can put the bond value as well as the prevailing interest rate so if i am assuming that the one year forward rate is 5% and one year forward rate one year from now so which means i am talking about uh, a year from now these are the possible paths i am talking about either it can be a 6% or 7% as a convention probably it better that we note the higher side at the top and the lower value at the bottom both of them with equal probability so even this can go at 50% and this can go at 50% so we are talking about uh, find the value of a 2 year zero coupon bond so from a bond standpoint so this is the zero year this is one year this is two year means the bond is actually maturing at this particular point so because it is maturing and it is a zero coupon bond it will pay me a cash flows of 100 which is known this cash flows are known whatever may be the path of the interest rate 
I know that 100 is the cash flow that I would be getting at the end of year 2. So, I can find out uh, the present value at the end of year 1, assuming that 7% is the forward rate. So, here also I can assume that the chances of upward and downward is 50. It doesn't matter because at the end of 2 years, whatever may be the scenario, I will definitely get 100 because this is an option free or uh, this is a, uh, a zero coupon option free kind of a bond. So, with this, this is the first step. So, what I will do, I will uh, create in the spreadsheet, I will simply uh, take these uh, scenarios, right, I will uh, take this as 5%, probably uh, here uh, uh, or uh, here I will take it as 7% and here I will take it as 6% and uh, as far as uh, the security is concerned, I know that it can give me a hundred whether uh, whatever may be the path it is taking it will definitely give me hundred itself so what i will uh, do if i have to find out the value of this bond as of here what is the average value of the bond as of here it is 50 percent times hundred plus another 50 percent times hundred this is the value of the bond as on here but if I want to find the value of the bond as on here, I will uh, divide it by 1.07 because this is a one year kind of a rate. I will divide this by 1.07. So what is uh, happening? The value of the bond as on this date is nothing but 0.5 times 100 plus another 0.5 times 100 whatever is uh, 100 itself right uh, or probably I will uh, use these uh, spreadsheet terms 0.5 times this plus 0.5 times this this are the values divided by 1 plus 7 percent so the value of the bond as on this date is becoming somewhere around 93.45 the same logic I can use uh, here also to find out the value of the bond. So again, if I want the value of the bond here, I will take, okay, there is a 50% chance of getting a 100 and another 50% chance of getting a 100. So this is the value as at the end of two years. But if I want at the end of one year, I have to discount it by the one year rate. So I am saying that there might be a possibility that the one year at the end of one year the interest rate may be six percent so i am talking about the value here which is working out to 94.34 again the same logic now this is the value this there is some possibility for this value at the end of one year some possibility for this value again 50 50 so all i can do now is I am saying there is a 50% chance that the bond will touch this number. At the same time, there is another 50% chance that the bond will touch this number. So, this is the expected value of the bond at the end of one year. But right now, if I want what is the value of the bond, again I am discounting it with the current interest rate, which is telling me that my bond is worth 89.42 bucks so the value of the bond in this case is 89.42 this is an option free bond very straightforward we know that it is maturing at the end of two years so the cash flows are 100 at the end of two years i'm trying to uh, find out uh, what are the possible cash flows at the end of uh, one year by discounting them with all the possible uh, discount rates at each of the period at the end of each of the periods and again uh, 